All right, so I'll explain you how this is going to work. It's going to be a classic webinar, so I believe you know what to expect. So first, I'm going to share with you a little presentation of what we're going to see during the webinar. Um, then we're going to have like a 20 minutes Q&A session. So if you could please use the Q&A section here on Zoom. Uh, of course, there is the chat you're using right now to say hi, which is cool. But if you want to get your questions answered, please use the Q&A menu because it's way easier for us to manage all your questions. Um, if there's any issue during the webinar, if um, our internet network faults or just stop hearing me or things like that, please let us know because I got a teammate taking all, all the conversations. And um, yeah, I think we can start. Uh, I'm gonna switch off my camera. Oh, by the way, we've just, some of you might know that we've just moved to Barcelona. So we are, right now we're sharing this space with another startup from Barcelona. It's called um, it's called Marfield, and it's a really cool office. Uh, we got even a a remote control camera. That's Brian, our CMO, right there. We got a crazy terrace uh, with a lot of plants and flowers and everything. Just wanted to show you a bit. This is a temporary space, but uh, we're quite comfortable here here in Barcelona. Uh, we're in Barcelona uh, right now. We're in Sants, uh, like right next to the train station. And um, yeah, we're gonna stay here for like two, three months until we find our own venue. And so far, so good, really, really excited. Thanks for asking, Mike. All right, so I'm gonna switch off my camera and let's let's start with this. First the presentation, then we're gonna go to the app. We're gonna check all that, uh, all those cool flows. And, um, and finally, the Q&A session. So thank you very much for coming again. I'm switching off my camera and let's begin. All right, so you should be watching a banana right now. Almost, yeah, it's pretty much my favorite fruit. So let's start with the presentation. Um, so this is a Lambda 101 webinar. Uh, it's July 10th. It's quite soon on some parts of the planet. It's 6 p.m. here in here in Spain in Barcelona. And uh, I'm Chris Villar. I'm the responsible for operations and co-founder of Lambda, and here with me controlling all the conversations and questions. It's Frank Conejos, our CMO and co-founder. Um, yeah, so uh, as I was explaining, uh, we, we basically thought for this webinar that we were just going to build a, a cool land bot that includes some of our new features, like you see some new question types, like scales, ratings, pictures, yes, no questions. We brought quite a lot of new question types, but also integrations. Um, I believe some of you have already tested integrations like Google Sheets. It used to be a beta integration like a couple of weeks ago. We've rolled it up for all of our user base and we'll, we'll show you how to integrate natively uh, Google Sheet and Lambot, which is quite, quite convenient if you're trying to send data or look for values in external databases without technical knowledge. Um, of course, the Stripe, Stripe integration, you know, there's a Stripe, um, integration block inside a chatbot builder. I'll show you how you have to configure it, um, those three options it gives, and then what's the interface like. And finally, um, of course, last but not least, we'll see some lead scoring. Uh, we'll use some conditional logic blocks for lead scoring, and then we'll, we'll perform a human takeover depending on those answers. Um, that's all in the same, same chatbot flow. I'm gonna go through it as an external um, user first, and then we're gonna dig deep into the chatbot builder, and I'll show you how how it looks for the inside. Then again, Q and A session. So if you already have some questions, please um, you can uh, jot them down. And if you don't, feel free to do it throughout the webinar. So let's start. Let's start with this. Uh, I'm gonna move on to the lamb bot, and here it is. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be reading it and explaining you which features are being used at each part of the land bot, and then we're gonna see the flow. So hello there, this is a multi-welcome message. Uh, I've realized that most of you don't use the multi-welcome message while you were asking for it a lot. So I don't know if you know it, but you, you, you do now. In the start message, you can add several messages or images. So instead of having a single message, you can add more than one. That means more information in a more natural way. And then of course, the classical buttons. So hello there, we got this beautiful Carlino. Welcome to the webinar, to this webinar, Lambot. Thank you, and we start the conversation. 
Um, it seems there's a technical problem. Please reload the page. Yeah, lo love this kind of stuff. Let me let me refresh. All right. <laughs> <ríe> Mira los, tú puedes los comentarios. ¿no? ¿Eh? Los públicos. Vale. Hey guys, I'm really sorry about this. Uh, can you tell me if you, if you can hear me right now? Because I've lost my internet connection. Yeah, I'm sorry guys, I'm sorry guys. Uh, could any, could one of you tell me where did you stop hearing me? Shall I start the lamb bot right from the beginning? Uh, you heard all, all right, all right, all right. You know, we got some limitation in terms of hours with this um, guest network here. And yeah, I just had to renew those permissions. But I'm back, so I'm gonna share my screen again. Sorry about that, guys. <clears throat> Let me share my screen and go back to the land bot. All right, I'm gonna start it again. Um, by the way, uh, we are recording these as usual. So uh, even with this drop, you, you're gonna you're gonna have the recording on your on your email. Even if you can, for those that uh, register the seat, but can attend, we're gonna send it to. Uh, one one thing I want to show you is uh, well, I was talking about the multi start message. I'm gonna click here and thank you, and you'll see that the chat bot says happy to have you here, Chris. And you might be wondering, but you, you haven't provided your name. How how does how, how does it happen? So if I turn up my, my full screen, you can see here that I'm using hidden fields in the URL. So um, there's an article that explains how it works and I'm gonna show it to you from the chatbot builder, but it basically allows you to send variables through the URL. In this case, we're sending two variables, name and email, and all you have to do is, well, question mark name equals Chris and email equals Chris Sobel at landbot.io. So it's super easy to use hidden fields and you can customize the experience. So if you already know the name of your, of your visitor, you can even use dynamic fields in the URL. <clears throat> so you don't need to uh, create a single URL for every user, just use dynamic fields and it's super easy. And as you can see, uh, for a visitor that here's happy to have you here, Chris, you know, the experience is way better and way special. So I, I strongly recommend you use some hidden fields. I'll show you how it looks like from the chatbot builder. So happy to have you here, Chris. Let me show you some cool stuff. This is one of our brand new questions. Don't you love it? This is a yes, no question. Quite simple, but effective uh, with these emojis and brown and button. So yeah, I love it. <clears throat> Sorry. And you can also use uh, dynamic scales into your land bots, ranging from whatever to whatever you want. So yeah, this is basically a way of adding these dynamic scales that look really, really good. And um, you can customize all these texts and everything. This is the best webinar ever, so I'm gonna rate it with a five. And now one of my favorites, um, we can make it a bit more visual. This works great for e-commerce. So you remember in the ask a question buttons type block, you were able to add little images to buttons. But now we've created a specific question type called pictures that allows you to add these big pictures with a little tagline in them and create this uh, sort of carousel gallery that looks really, really good. <clears throat> Here I got an example with some design chairs. I'm gonna go for the Ames one. And now, still in your fortune, that's the Stripe integration uh, loading text you can customize. And this is the payment. So I've selected the Ames tier to 79.99. Uh, and here's my company name. I can customize it. It's the little description. I can customize it too. And well, I can put my card number without one. I'm just going to cancel it. And you'll see afterwards in the chatbot builder that you can define three different paths if the payment was successful, if the payment failed, or if the payment was canceled. That's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to cancel it, figuring out the best way to break the bank. Please wait. And here's some 
GIF again. And one of our new question types. Uh, well, at least we can validate URLs now, type yours. So this allows you to validate if what the user is typing in is actually an URL. So if I type in Lambot, it's gonna say, hey, that's, that's not an URL, try again. And I need to type in Lambot.io. <clears throat> Oh, and emoji-based rating questions. Yeah, these this are one of my favorite too. So you can select stars, you can select faces, and you can create these uh, dynamic rating questions, which are really cool. Isn't it awesome, Chris? Again, the, the variable there. And um, here I'm explaining what the chat bot is doing behind behind the scenes. So now I'll send you all this info to a Google Sheet using Landbot's native integration. I'm gonna show you right now. And I'll receive an email notification too. I've configured an email notification. And since your responses were awesome, I'll look for an available human to help you out. So I'm doing some conditional logic here. And because I've said that, well, I basically love this and I gave a five, the highest rating, the conditional logic block is leading me to a assignment block. So this is all happening in the background and I'm gonna show you now from the inside what this looks like. So let's go to our Lambot app. <clears throat> I'm already logged in and I'm gonna scroll down until I find this chat bot, webinar 18th of July. And here it is, it's a quite simple flow yet effective. It has a lot of features and I believe it's quite useful. So first off, the star message. So I was saying, I find it multiple messages in the start message. So I'm able to provide more information to make it more interesting. It's like when you enter a landing page, you don't get just a, a sentence. Sometimes you do, but it's great to have the possibility to add images, to add videos, to add several messages, and then of course, buttons. Um, then a simple message, and this is one of the new questions. This is the yes, no one. Uh, you can, of course, customize the text, yes, no. Same for the scale. As you can see, you can select where do you want the scale to start and where do you want it to finish, and the labels behind the lowest and the highest <clears throat> um, rating, and, of course, the field name. Um, then, this is the pictures one, the one with the big pictures. It looks like a regular Ask a Question buttons block, but it's not. It's a specific one, and you'll find it by clicking here and Ask a Question. Uh, pictures right at the bottom. Let me delete it. And the mechanic is pretty much the same. You just click here in settings and you're able to upload one of your pictures and it's gonna look just the way you've, you've sent it. All right, I'm gonna apply these changes. And then remember I had the Stripe payment. So as I was explaining, when the Stripe payment, the first thing you need to do is you need to connect your account. So basically you're gonna click on this button and you're, you'll see a light box that asks you for three different fields. Uh, first, your account, then your, I think used your API key and then your API secret, you just copy and paste it from your Stripe account and it's integrated. Then you select the amount you wanna charge, uh, the currency, and as I was saying, the little title and description. And you can also customize the loading messages. So this first one is when the payment is being generated. And this second one is when the payment is being processed. And then we got three different, three different possibilities, three different scenarios here. So we got success, failed, and canceled. So if the payment is completed, you can uh, create a pet here and say, hey, uh, thanks for completing the payment. Uh, if it failed, you can, I don't know, go back to the chair question and, and select and ask them to select another item or you can just skip this payment. And if it's canceled for some reason, it's usually because the visitor or the user is not ready to make the payment yet. <clears throat> and in this case, I've just connected that with a fun gift. All right. Uh, this next question is the URL validation. Remember, if it doesn't contain a dot plus at least two characters, uh, the system won't validate it and it's gonna ask for it again. And then this uh, rating question, as I was explaining, you can select between different scales. We'll be adding more, more customization options here. 
All right, and here comes the conditional logic. So every time you see this condition, condition, it means conditional logic, and it means that some cool stuff is happening right there. So um, in this case, I've created a conditional logic blocks that works as follows. So the conditions follow the rule and, which means that both conditions need to be fulfilled. I could select or, which means that any of the two conditions can be, can be fulfilled and, and we're going to hit success. But in this case, we need to fulfill both rules. The first one is that the field scale contains a number one, which is the lowest uh, rating we could give. And the rating question contains uh, this um, angry emoji, which means that this user is quite, uh, quite angry or quite disappointed with our service which would be the true option. So I'm gonna ask him, all right, so please let us know why do you hate us so much? But if the answers were anything else, we just follow the false path and we just can continue the conversation. Isn't it awesome? So this is great, you know, if for specific responses, you wanna get um, insight from your visitors, but not for, from all of them, you can use this conditional logic blocks uh, for it. Remember, this is a premium feature, so those of you in the sandbox plan might not be able to use it. All you have to do is upgrade to our starter plan. <laughs> and then uh, let's continue the flow. This is a simple message. Um, and here's where, where most of the magic happens. So this was a simple message, remember it. Now we'll send this info to a Google Sheet using Landbot's native integration. And I'll also receive an email uh, with this information. So first, the email notification. Uh, we got these integrations like email, and we can select if we want, by clicking on this toggle, if we want the Slack notification or the email one or both. In these cases, the email notification that's gonna be sent to myself uh, with this subject. And here I include the different fields provided by the user. So once the flow reaches this specific notification block, I'm gonna receive all these in my email. And then we have this second block, that's the Google uh, Sheet Integration block. This is a bit more complex, but let me go step by step. It's quite easy to configure. So same as with Stripe, you need to configure uh, to, to integrate your account. So you click here on that account and you basically log into Stripe uh, with your email. So this is my account, Christobal at helloyume.com. And, um, all you have to do is uh, the system is going to fetch all your your spreadsheets and you can select it from the drop down. In this case, I've created this specific spreadsheet for this webinar. It's webinar 187. Let me show you what this spreadsheet looks like. Here it is. So it's basically different different columns with the different fields I'm asking for. Not in name and email because I do already have them from the URL, but the just no question, the scale, pictures, rating, text, everything. So going back to the app, we need to select that spreadsheet. We need to select the sheet, the specific sheet that information is, or that table is. In this case, there's only one, sheet one. And then choose an action. We got three different actions here. We can insert a new row in the sheet, which means that, yeah, it's gonna create a new row every time with every conversation with the values provided by the visitor. This is the one we've chosen for this lamb bot. You can also update a row in the sheet so you can tell him, hey, look for this value and update this other value next to it, which is really, really useful too, or get data from a sheet. Let's, let's imagine we have a list of IDs with uh, the names next to them. Uh, if someone provides the ID, this integration can look for that ID in this spreadsheet and, um, and retrieve the, the name associated to that, to that ID number. So the, the possibilities are endless. And the most interesting thing here is that you don't really need technical knowledge. You don't really need complex external databases. You can use just a spreadsheet and export here, import here a lot of values, a lot of information, and make Lambot super powerful. It can search for information, it can update information, or it can you know, search for information and bring it back to the chat without a single line of code. So it's really, really powerful. I strongly recommend you to, <clears throat> to give it a try, to do some tests, to ask our support team uh, for different use cases. Uh, this is a brand new feature, which is discovering its full potential. It's really, really interesting. 
So I'm selecting the action, insert a new row in a sheet. And uh, basically I need to just like, it's gonna automatically get the different columns from my original spreadsheet. And I just need to say, hey, so for the column name, I want you to put there the variable I get as name. Same for email, just no, just no, scale, scale, pictures, pictures. Remember all these field names, it's something you can configure, you can customize by clicking on any of these questions. <clears throat> right on at the bottom, you see save answers in the field scale, you can modify it. <clears throat> so it's super easy, let me zoom out and go back to the Google Sheet integration. And, um, and as simple as that, so as you provide the information, once the flow reaches this block, all that information is gonna be sent here. <clears throat> Chris, my email, yes, five eggs, I'm very happy. All right, so back to the app, I got a second conditional logic block, but in this case, instead of trying to get more insight from a specific type of user, the ones with the lowest ratings, as in the example before, this one is uh, performing some late scoring. Let's see how it's built. So um, same here is N, which means that both rules need to be um, fulfilled. And the first one is that scale contains number five, which is the highest rating, and rating contains uh, this emoji, which is the highest rating too. So this means we have a really, really happy um, user or visitor talking to our lane bot. So we're gonna sign that chat to an agent and we're gonna, I don't know, ask for feedback or try to sell or anything. But that means that that user is having a great experience and uh, we want to take that opportunity to talk to him. Uh, this is an assigned chat to an agent blog. Um, for those of you that haven't seen one, uh, this is basically a blog that assigns a conversation to a human agent inside the app. So if you've seen, you, we've got a section, let me show you, let me show it to you. Um, do not exit, let me say from publish. Because I know that some of you are using the human takeover, but some of you are not. So let me show you, this is a dashboard, but there's a lot happening here in the chat section. So here we got all the land bots we've created on this account and all the users that are registered in this account. Here is webinar 18.7. This is basically the conversation I just had. And uh, with that block assigned chat to an agent, we are able to, well, the system basically assigns the conversation to the agent available, in this case, me. And you can continue the conversation there, like, hello. I don't know if this is the same conversation. No, it's an unassigned, I'm sorry. This is it. Hello. So I'm, I'm talking from the, from the app as an agent, as a human agent. and. Uh, the visitor is receiving all the information in the chat. You can customize this and everything. <clears throat> Hi there. How are you doing? You can hear that sound. That's the sound the app makes for every upcoming, incoming message. So this is quite powerful. Again, if you're asking for a budget and you want to personally talk to that visitor with a huge budget or in the, in the chat bot we were uh, we were watching, um, we can ask for feedback for these really, really happy, really, really satisfied users. So we just signed that conversation. And if you're not that satisfied, you just uh, follow the false path and say, have a good one or whatever. So conditional logic blocks are not only for, um, for lead scoring, but you can really, really customize the whole flow without having to add like a thousand different blocks for each different path. So instead of having to build um, a, a different arrow for each option and everything, all you have to worry about is setting up the right conditional logic blocks. And um, yeah, last but not least, uh, if we click here on power-ups, I'm gonna show you the hidden fields. We click here on hidden fields. So basically you can, Type in here any field name and something like address and click here. And this means that the system is gonna by default understand that in the URL there might be some, some fields, in this case, name, email, and address. So the original URL had these two, name and email. All you have to do again, if we go back to this URL, is add this question mark and then field name, value, and field name, value. This way, let's imagine you're sending um, 
an email campaign to a MailChimp list, or you're using intercom like we do to send all these massive email campaigns, you can like, like well, the registration landbot for this webinar was built like this. So you didn't have to actually enter any email or name because we already had it. All we had to do is add here the variable that intercom uses for name. In this case, let's imagine it's add name. And then for email, same thing. It, the, um, the variable name that intercom or MailChimp or SendLoop or any other tool uses for that specific variable. So you can just send the same URL to a lot of people. Your software is gonna transform that variable into the value and all your users will see this customized experience. So you can start playing with it with name. It's a great way of starting with hidden fields. Try something as simple as this. Question mark name equals Chris with the hidden fields power up activated in your chatbot flow and the field name included. And let's let's start testing this um, this way of customizing your, your lane bots. It's, it's really interesting and everybody is like, well, I love your registration lane bot. And it's all because you don't need to add any information. We already have it, so let's make things simple. Um, yeah, I believe that was that was basically it. So I'm just gonna, I just wanna finish this presentation with three different uh, but very important concept. So the first one or advice, um, the first one would be keep it simple. So we see a lot of chatbots that try to explain um, a lot of information with long messages, uh, without images, without media. So we always recommend to keep it simple. Um, just keep it sh short in terms of message length. Um, add media to enrich the experience, but keep it as simple as possible. This is not a blog post. This is not a Bible. This is a landbot. This is a natural experience, a conversation. So keep it simple. Uh, the second piece of advice would be uh, you get what you give, which means that if you want to get information from your visitors, of course, landbot performs great when it comes to get information from your visitors. But you cannot ask for the information at every single point of the flow without giving anything to your visitors. So it's really important to keep that balance between what you get and what you give. So if you want to have information, first find interesting excuses to ask for it, but secondly, uh, provide useful information to your visitors and they'll be more than happy to give their personal details. And finally, uh, really, really, really important, Although we provide these URLs for you to share your Lambot, um, the reality is that 99% of these URLs are not receiving traffic. So nobody knows about them. So we always recommend you to embed Lambot into your website, which is already getting traffic. And all you need is that traffic to talk to a Lambot instead of interact with a static website. So we really, really recommend that you go come here to the share section Click on embed into your website, select the format you prefer, full page, widget mode, which means you can add it anywhere on your website, and live chat, copy this snippet, paste it into your site. If you have any issues, let us know. We're here to help. And all your traffic will convert better because <clears throat> you have that conversation, that natural way of uh, communicating with them. So yeah, we, we I'm, I'm, I'm thinking now on some really interesting use cases that many, many people that want to start their chatbot adventure, they just uh, substitute their contact form in their, in their footer of their website with the Lambot and it works great. So um, instead of trying to conversationalize the whole world, which is something we are trying to do, but uh, in the beginning, just try to change small things. Like if you got a contact form, try using the Lambot. I'm telling you, you want to convert more. And then step by step, you're going to make the whole experience more conversational and probably you'll end up having a full page slam bot, but let's start um, small. Um, that was it. That was it. Thank you very much for hearing me. Um, I hope it was not too long. And now I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to answer some of your questions. I hope there's, there's some in the chat. So let me go back to Zoom. I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to start the video again. But what's wrong with the camera? It's sort of intelligent. All right. Looks like I've been in the heat for the past six months. 
All right, uh, so let me take the Q&A section. I'm gonna start with the first question. Mike's asking, will it be recorded? Um, yes, it will. It, it's being recorded actually and we'll send it to you. <clears throat> so don't worry about that. Thanks for asking, Mike. Mm -hmm. uh, Marcelo, you will show anything for WhatsApp? I, I'm afraid not, uh, Marcelo. This, this webinar was, um, was thought to, to explain basically Lambot and the Chatbot Builder. And while some of the features we've seen are, are also included in the WhatsApp integration, we won't be talking much about WhatsApp here. If you have some, some questions about the channel, please send us an email to help at lambot.io. Thanks. <clears throat> All right, next one. So Jarek's asking, well, using API, is there a way to have at name right away in the welcome message? That's a really, that's a really good question. Um, I don't know the answer, so I'm just gonna leave it there and ask it to the technical team because I know that um, without using the API, it's not possible, unfortunately, to bring variables to the start message, but I don't know if using the API it is. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just ask for it, Jarek, and I'll let you know. Let me type that down. All right, next one, Matthew. Just so I don't forget at the end, what is the magic moving camera? <laughs> yeah, actually, it's some, some sort of, of um, it's a Logitech, um, it looks like a phone or something like that, and then it has this really, really cool camera with some concepts, optic and everything, and you can move it using, using this, which is really, really cool. And um, don't know much about it. I've just discovered it, so I'm gonna. Yeah, if you want more information, let us know, and I can, I can send you over the model or something. Yeah, yeah it's, it's actually really, really cool. <clears throat> um, all right. So Tiago, <clears throat> Stripe, can we do recurring payments or one-off only? That's a really good question. Uh, right now, we can only do one-off payments. We get a lot of feedback on recurring payments. We might be included it. There's still no deadline, so I won't, I, I won't promise anything. But um, I'm going to add your feedback to our counter as there, there are quite a lot of users that demand these recurring payments. And I believe that's super interesting. <clears throat> mm -mm -mm. Uh, 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 all right, so Jarek's making a suggestion. Well, working in a builder would be amazing to have an option to select all, select multiple and let move rearrange. Yeah, it takes a lot of time. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I mean, we spend the whole day building lane bots, so we know better than anyone what's <clears throat> some, some of these improvements. And I totally agree with you. This is something that would make our life way easier, but it's just, um, it's just quite complex uh, technically. So there, there are many, many things that users are like, hey, what, why don't you have that? You know, we, um, we really try to prioritize every single feature we bring to the table and it's really, really hard. And these simple stuff like, yeah, bulk selecting blocks or, um, I don't know, common Z that that's, that sounds really, really easy, but it's quite complex technically, but we'll be bringing more, um, productivity features to the chatbot builder for sure. <clears throat> All right. So let me clean this a bit. All right, so Bruno, I've seen some marked up text. Uh, what type of markup text editing can we use aside from bold? All right, so uh, you can use, yeah, bold using asterisks. Uh, you can use italic using low bars. And you can also add headers using percentage H1. <clears throat> Those are the, the three main markups we, we allow here in, on Lambot. All right. What about integration with PayPal? Andrea asks. In Italy, we also use Satispay very much. How can we integrate Satispay instead of Stripe? Yeah, I'm afraid that the problem with payment getaways is, is that you, you just can't iframe those, <clears throat> those payments inside the inbox messages because the security is way, way higher than with other apps. So we're focused on Stripe because it's really, really used, especially in the United States. But we know that um, 
many, many users ask about PayPal, especially <clears throat> status pay, maybe not that much, but PayPal for sure. Um, yeah, I just can tell you, I'll tell the product team about this as I, <clears throat> as I usually do, and PayPal is a great, is a great second payment getaway to integrate. So yeah, thanks, thanks for that feedback. Um, so Mike is asking, does Lambot integrate with Active Campaign? Um, yes, it does. Uh, we don't have a an Active Campaign integration, but using our Zapier integration blocks, you can get information with Lambot and send it to Active Campaign to update contacts, create new contacts, or anything else. So, yeah, definitely using uh, sorry using Zapier, you can search for the app directory for Active Campaign, and you can yeah, get information with Lambot, create a Zap, and then send it send all that information to active campaign so let me let me share with you it's a savvier integration block i'm sending it there and uh you can check in our knowledge base if there is a step-by-step -step guide if you don't know how to configure it again hit support over there help you out all right bruno uh, in the spreadsheet integration we have a d docs or G drive navigation window is then instead of a spreadsheet list. I have hundreds. I have hundreds and that would make it impossible to find stuff. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Mm. Yeah, that's a great that's great feedback. Uh, right now you need to yeah select it from the drop down. Again, this is a quite new feature. So we yeah, we need feedback like this from uh, experienced users with that with that app so yeah definitely you have like 1,000 2,000 different spreadsheets it's going to be really really difficult to find the one you're interested in I believe I, I was just lucky because every time I create a new one it appears there like right in the first second position in the drop down but yeah yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna share this feedback too thanks for sharing Bruno mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm just uh, um, let me make this a bit bigger. All right, so um, do I have to use? Mike is asking, do you have to use the Lambot subdomain as the URL? Uh, nope, nope. So you got two options. You can take the URL we create for you, which is lambot.io slash u slash a long code. Or you can click there and embed into your website as we've just seen and copy that snippet and paste it into your website and it will have your your very own domain. So no no subdomains. All right. So uh Sad is asking, I know you have Zapier for additional integrations, but will you be adding Airtable as a native integration? Um I gotta be honest here in an Airtable, although it, it is a tool we use every day, we don't have it in our integration roadmap at all. Um, it's a really, really powerful spreadsheet and, and yeah, definitely native integration would make it really, really interesting. But if we compare the user base of Google Sheets uh, against Airtables, you know, we're just trying to be as efficient as possible with the resources we have. But again, yeah, let me let me share this feedback. Airtable is a great tool and it could be awesome to have it integrated with Lambot. So thanks, thanks for that, Seth. Let me take a sip. <clears throat> All right. Um, so Jarek's asking any template development samples of user cases. Yeah, um, we've added one flow template last week and like six different design templates a couple of weeks ago, and we've we've made it way way more easy to add new templates. So um, now the whole team is able to do that and we have quite a lot of them prepared. So we'll be, yeah, we'll be adding more templates to the dashboard so you don't need to start from scratch, whichever your use case is. So yeah, definitely we'll be adding more. All right, so Jarek, um, Jarek's asking, well, transferring Tad to another bot are all, parameters are transferred to the new one. 
Hmm. Yeah, using our bot link function. That's a good question. So if you, that's a really good question. I, I just can't answer. So yeah, let me let me ask the team about this. So yeah, using the bot link. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask him, and I'm gonna let you know, Jared. Thanks for asking. Uh, so Christoph, beautiful name. Uh, can I connect the live chat to one of my Slack channel so that I can answer out of Slack? Mm. You know, there's no there's no two click integration to do that. I mean, it's technically possible because one of our APIs is what we call channel API. And it allows you to integrate external channels into Lambot's dashboard, which means you can create Lambots or chatbots and those chatbots are gonna work on any channel you integrate. You just need to tell the system, hey, this is what Lambot looks like, transform it into this other thing so it's like and understand it and you could um, keep that conversation using Slack. But um, again, right now we are not super prepared for that. Um, it would require quite a lot of technical knowledge and, and time. So yes, it's possible, but it's not for every user right now. It, it, it would need quite a lot of technical work to, to complete. Mm. Thanks for asking. So Bruno, what do you consider late scoring, the conditional logic? Yeah, uh, late scoring is, as I see it, is basically when you ask for, imagine you have a landing page with three fields there. So what's your role, how big is your company, and what's your email? So once I get that lead with that information, I can score it. I can say, all right, so your, your company, uh, it has more than 1,000 employees. So that's a really, really high score. And I see that your role is a manager, so that's a high score too. So basically, lead scoring is taking the answers from your questions or fields in a regular form and um, applying a score to each answer so you can say hey this is a really interesting lead let's talk to him uh, in person or all right so I won't take this opportunity because his role is quite low or I'm just not interested in this kind of lead so that's that's what I call lead scoring and the conditional logic block it's great for lead scoring it's not only for it but since Lambot it's all about conversion I think lead scoring is a great use case for conditional logic <clears throat> what <laughs> there are like yeah 50, 50 questions or something i'm gonna i'm gonna try to be faster so uh andrea are you thinking of integrating lanebot with dialog flow to provide some nlp um yeah we're thinking of it um we've been thinking of it for the past months i think there's no deadline yet uh, so far, so good with the uh, dumb Ted bots, like we like to call them. So yes, we, we do have plans to make Lambot more complex in terms of artificial intelligence in the future, but I wouldn't expect it in less than six to 12 months. But yeah, that's something that came to our minds and that we think about it quite often. How do I make GIFs or images? the full size of the chat bubble. I'm gonna like 10 pixels pattern when I upload a GIF. Yeah, Red Food, that's a really good question because uh, there was some custom style sheet in that chat bot. So we, um, so yeah, we basically removed using CSS, though uh, that pattern you see when you add an image or a GIF. So on one hand, it looks great. Personally, I think that images without that pattern look great, but uh, you need to keep in mind, all of you guys that, Although we allow you to add any custom style sheet, any JavaScript function to your Lambot to make it more powerful, to make it look better, uh, you need to keep in mind that we can guarantee that all those customizations are going to last in time because we keep updating the platform. And although we try to be as respectful as possible with past classes and past features and past structures <clears throat> in terms of code, there's always the possibility of getting all messed up. So yes, it's possible using some CSS um, in the video. I'm gonna I'm gonna share it with you guys, with all of you. But please keep in mind that you need to sacrifice something if you want to if you want to customize it that much in terms of design. And you might see some some things on mobile that doesn't look that good because you find it at CSS. So yeah, that's that's how we did it. <clears throat> 
All right. Uh, um. Oh no, I just. Sorry, I I I click on one question, but I haven't haven't read it. So if I'm skipping one one of your questions, please submit it again, and I'll answer it right at the at the end. So Drew is asking. Can you create a blog post or tutorial on how to use the dynamic URL feature? Yeah, actually, we got something. We got something prepared for you guys to to learn how to use the this dynamic URL, and I believe it's super interesting. So yeah, let's let's create an article for it. Let me tap it down too. Thanks, Drew. All right, so uh, Derek, any plans for mobile app for live agents? Um, yeah, I mean, we, we, we thought about it. I personally think it, it would be awesome just to have all those conversations on mobile, but we just have other priorities right now. We need to optimize many, many of our current features, and then we'll start thinking on what ones that, that, that whole feature works better on desktop will make it more easy to manage on mobile, and that will probably come with a with a mobile app. So yeah, that's that's a great idea, Derek. <clears throat> so Bruno is asking, how does the live chat looks like? Um, yeah, that's a really good question. So yeah, let me share my screen. Now I'm going to show you <clears throat> a live chat. Mm. Yeah, here's an example we've built for a Spanish company. <clears throat> it's a blank page, but you'll see the live chat right here. See it here. So it's basically a regular LAN bot, but yeah, in the size of a live chat. I personally love it because it's way different to those live chats you see online. Um, they all look the same. You just can add one color or something like that. But here you can customize everything and it can get them really, really well with the background website. So yeah, this is how it looks. <clears throat> All right, Marcelo, I would like to see Lamebot working with WhatsApp, just show something working with that. <clears throat> I'm afraid that I, I can right now because I just don't have any, any WhatsApp number integrated here. Uh, the integration is a bit complex. You need your WhatsApp web session, a WhatsApp account linked to it, and then um, the your account integrated with your WhatsApp number to see all that information flow. So um, I'm sorry about this, Marcelo, but please reach out to support, and, and they can they can give you more information about this. <clears throat> sorry. How do you fetch data from Google Sheet? Um, that's quite a long answer. So as we are preparing a specific Google Sheet integration article, um, let's let's wait for it. It should be ready within days. Um, this rest I thought I read it correctly. So yeah, we're working on a new article. It's kind of complex. I mean, to explain the whole process here by, <clears throat> by word, so I'm just, I'm just gonna wait for it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna share it with you guys. All right, Paul is asking: Is there a search, for example, if someone starts to type something, e.g., price, and then an option jumps up? For example, do you want more info on pricing? Hmm. Actually, there's. It's not exactly like that. But we got a couple of questions. Uh, we got the autocomplete question I haven't I haven't showed you. That's basically that that you're describing. So let me show you really really quick. So if we go back to the Lambot app. Let's go back to the builder. Bum, bum, bum. I'm gonna save and publish. I thought this was going to be quicker. <clears throat> Yeah, let me just show you really, really quick. So we got a question type that's ask a question, autocomplete. You can say uh, what do you need, and then hello, info, pricing, others, menu, whatever. So this works as follow, let me preview it. 
So it doesn't answer your question as you start typing it, but it recommends you different answers uh, or different options. So this is not a bot message, click here to edit, what do you need? And then you can start typing and if you press enter, you're gonna send that word and you can link that specific button to that information on pricing and you can make it quite, quite intuitive to, to navigate. Hope that clarifies, Paul. Uh, next one, Tiago. Uh, can we do recurring payments or one-off only? I'm afraid one-off only. Bye now, Tiago, I'm sorry. Yutz is asking, hi, what about common blocks? It would be really helpful for more complex blocks. Yeah, it would be really, really helpful and this is already part of our product feedback. I'm with you. Uh, I think it would be really, really nice to be able to add notes and other things to, to your chatbot flows. We have chatbots of like 300 blocks and it's almost impossible to manage all that information. So yeah, yeah, that's that's valuable feedback. Um, so Clevo is asking approximately, when will the messenger integration be ready? I'm the user who's value low. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I know if I do, Clevo, happy to, hear, happy to have you here. Um, you know, I ask our development team every single minute when is the integration going to work again? I don't know why it's taking so long, but it's on Facebook's hands, and um, yeah, I'm afraid that there's there's no more information I can I can give you now. We're just waiting for that that review. The permissions are okay; they're just still reviewing it, and um, yeah, that's that's basically. It. Thanks, thanks for asking. Thanks for your patience. <clears throat> so, race is there? And other option in Biden's questions. Mm, well, you can add it. Actually, we, we do add it. If we create, for instance, an autocomplete questions where we have like 30 or 40 different uh, different different options. You can add, I don't know, or other or things like that. So you can then ask for a open question like, what do you need? And then they can enter that free text. So yeah, definitely you need to add it manually, but definitely makes a lot of sense. So Clevo, I have an issue with chats and users. My chat bot remember the user, but it's it names them as right and not the name they put it. All right, so you need Clevo to make sure that the question, that blog where you're asking for the name, um, it, it's field name, it's actually name. Because sometimes you create a block to ask for the name then create a second block to ask for the name, delete the first one, but the second one's field name is name uh, low bar zero. That means that if you use the dynamic field at name, it's not going to recognize that field. So make sure that the block you ask um, for that name contains a field name, name actually. <clears throat> oh, let me take the time. Oh, these may have already been addressed or I missed it in the interface. Is there an option to offer a visitor option to download a doc? Rasha is asking. Actually, actually not. Right now you need to add an URL, a hyperlink in a button or in the text using some HTML. There's no way to allow them to download anything. You can ask for it. You can create a file type question to ask for those, uh, that, 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 that sort of files, but you, they, you can you can just upload that document and, and have them download it. I, I recommend you to create an iframe for it. So if your document is located somewhere online, you can iframe um, that URL inside a, a Lambot message and it will give you the by default options to download it or, or things like that. So that would be a sort of workaround. Thank, thanks for asking. That, that's great feedback and we're already thinking about that. I didn't get the payment option. Is it a real is it a real option to the user to select their credit card and make the payment using Lambot? Yeah, actually, yeah. So at any point of the flow, you can just say, "Hey, complete this payment," and they can complete it. They can um, make it fail or they can cancel it. So yeah, that, that's that's a hundred percent possible. Again, in Lambot. Uh, so, Shrestha, if the data is in more than one row, how will the result from Google Sheet look like? Mm -mm -mm. I think that, yeah, it will, it will just add 
more and more roles. So it would look, yeah, pretty much like the one I, I shared with you. I don't know if I'm getting the question. Um, yeah, but it would just keep adding more and more roles. If, if you're asking for something else, please just uh, elaborate a bit more and, and let us know. Thanks. <clears throat> so Andrea, I'm de developing a chatbot accessible to paying users only, how can it manage with user ID and password needed by the user <clears throat> at login? Mm. So as I was saying, you can use the conditional, sorry, the Google Sheet integration to, <clears throat> to make sure that a specific user is part of your, it's a member of your, of your whatever. But if you wanna, if you wanna work with sensitive information like passwords um, and user IDs, that's not the most recommended way of, of, of doing it. We, we don't, we haven't developed yet any way of managing keywords and passwords and keys and things like that. <clears throat> if that password is just a number, imagine that you have a, a list of numbers and if you're in the list, it means you're a paying user. If you're not, it means you're not. I mean, you can you can do that with a Google Sheet. You just need to <clears throat> paste there all those all those user IDs, ask for it using Lambot, and then making sure that user ID is part of your of your sheet. If it is success, if it's not, fail. But if you're trying to use passwords, that encryption and everything is, is a bit more complex, and we still don't cover that. <clears throat> so Bruno is asking, could we fetch information we've written on the Google Sheet to send it on the Slack notification? Well, uh, let me think about that. So, yeah, definitely. I mean, let, 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 let's imagine you're asking um, for the email. So what's your email? Then you receive the email, you create a Google Sheet integration block and send it to Google Sheet and then you create a Slack email notification block and receive it through Slack. If that data, imagine you're asking for the email and then you want to send that related field to Slack, that, I think that's, that's not possible right now. I believe not. But yeah, you can send it to Google Sheet and then to Slack. But I, I don't think it's possible to send it to Google Sheet um, tech day, associated variable, and send it back to, <clears throat> to Slack. I'm sorry about that. <clears throat> oh, guys, it's already it's already uh, 7 p.m. here. Uh, I still have, yeah, more than 50 questions. I'm really sorry, but you know, I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm gonna invest some minutes of my time answering each one of these questions. So if you have more questions that you want to get answered, just type it, type it, type them in now and I'll be answering all of them. I don't know if we'll be using some Google doc or something and we'll make it public for you to see the answers, but we just don't have the time. And some of you might be in a rush. We are actually because this, 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 um, room is booked for only until, until 7 PM. <clears throat> so yeah, the com the camera too, Mark. Great. Uh, so yeah, we'll be taking all these questions. Oh, I'm getting emotional. I mean, I'm seeing so many interesting questions right here from all of you. <clears throat> and I promise I'll get them answered and I'm going to send them to you. Um, you can expect the recorded webinar, I think by Friday with all the, the questions answered. And um, well, it really depends on the amount of them. But yeah, so yeah, I'm just going to say Goodbye. Thank you very, very much, guys. I know uh, we spent some some weeks, some months without webinars, but I promise we're back. We're now in Barcelona. We're in an exciting new city. We just closed our funding round, and we're going to make awesome things, both regarding product, um, educational content, customer service, everything. So thank you very much for being there. Thank you very much for being here today. And um, again, ask your questions. We'll be answering them and sending the responses to you, as well as the recording. And well, happy conversation. Thank you very much, guys. Take a lot of care.